Hi there, my name is Laura and I'm a type 1 diabetic. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here with me. Um, I am coming at you tonight. It is like midnight on a Thursday. And uh, I was just thinking about how I have to change out my Omnipod tomorrow. And sometimes, not very often, but sometimes I'm over ambitious and I decide to decorate my pods. So I did this a little bit around Halloween. I did some fun Halloween decorations. Um, I've done some just, you know, not holiday related, but just because I felt like it. Uh, but what I do is I use these acrylic paint pens that I got just off of Amazon. And they're really nice. They um, have like, you know, regular acrylic paint inside of them. I'll try to show you one. Uh, and you have to kind of shake them up because they separate. It takes a while to uh, get the paint all mixed up inside of there, but you shake them, they've got like a little ball inside like you would find in a bottle of nail polish. And then they've got a nice fine tip on them. And it almost looks like it's a felt tip, but it's not, it's just like a plastic tip. It's almost like a fountain pen where it just, you know, lets a, a very small stream of the paint come out and you can get really pretty fine detail on these and uh, it comes out just like regular paint and then it dries hard on the Omnipod surface and they're waterproof. Uh, I was kind of worried the first time that I did one that when I got in the shower for the first time it was going to wash the paint right off but I didn't have any issues. I've showered with this paint on my pods quite a few times now and it's always totally fine. So what I do is I just did it without showing you, but I open up the new pod out of its package and I just, I take the pod out, but I leave the um, blue plastic piece on and I leave the backing on obviously. And then, you know, I just make my design on the pod and I let it dry. And these work best if you do a layer of paint, let it dry completely and then work with the next color. You don't really want to work with a a new color while the old one's wet unless you're trying to blend them, but they don't blend super well. It's better to layer like one color on top of the other. So I think what I'm going to do today, because it is the beginning-ish of December, we are approaching Christmas, uh, and I thought about some different Christmas designs that I might do, and I think I'm just going to go with a Christmas tree because that seems fairly simple and I can add different colored ornaments and make it look pretty cute, but hopefully it won't be too much work. So um, I will get to decorating and I will show you the finished product. Fine. 
It's beautiful. I'm loving it. Oh, I can't really see it. Look at that. Feeling quite artistic. It's not perfect, but it's fine. And that's that's the fun about decorating these Omnipods is that they don't have to be perfect. They're gonna be on your body for like three days and then you're gonna rip it off and throw it in the trash can. Or I don't know, I like to save the ones that I've decorated, but so far I have not found a good use for them. So if you have recommendations of how to uh, use my old used Omnipods after I take them off my body, let me know down in the comments. Um, so far they just kind of sit around and clutter up my coffee table. But I think this is cute. Um, I really like these paint pens. You saw me shaking them up. They, yeah, they separate and they take some time to mix up when you're getting ready to start drawing with them, but uh, they work really well. I think that the paint is pretty high quality. Uh, they dry nicely. I haven't had any issues with them separating or rubbing off or anything like that. So um, I would recommend these Amazon, I think the whole set of 24 pens was like $17 or something. They were pretty cheap. And the the brand is Trandpter, which sounds not the most legit, but um, you know what? They work fine. So uh, you can just search on Amazon though for acrylic paint pens and there are lots of options on there. I'm sure they all work fine. So this is me decorating my Omnipod. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have to change it out. Uh, mine's on its last night right now. So I will hop back on here tomorrow and uh, I'll actually just do the change out with you guys so that you can watch me do it. I'm wanting to put it on my arm so that'll be easy to film. So um, thanks for watching me decorate. I hope that you had fun and I will see you tomorrow. Hey there, so I am back. It is the next day and I have got my decorated pod that I am ready to fill up and uh, put on and replace my one that's about to expire. So uh, sometimes I wait a little bit past the pod expiration to replace it because I'm cheap and I'm always trying to extend the life of my pods as long as I possibly can. Um, and this one doesn't actually expire until I think like 4.30 is when it's supposed to expire. I'm trying to find the time right now. It's currently it's 3.18. So still a little ways away from the expiration. Yeah, it's saying 4.20. So I've got about another hour technically, but then these pods will actually go eight hours past when they're supposed to expire. But, you know, unfortunately today that would put me in the middle of the night. So I don't really want to be changing my pod in the middle of the night. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it right now. Um, I'm down to 13 units left in the reservoir, which, you know, again, I don't love to waste the insulin, but that's not enough to really make a huge difference for me. So I am going to go on into my um, PDM here and I will view pod details. And then there's a button down here that says change pod. So I'm going to hit that. And that is going to bring up this little sub menu that asks me, are you sure you really want to deactivate it? And I say, yes, deactivate the pod. It'll communicate with the pod for me. And those beeps mean that it has deactivated. So currently my pod is on my abdomen and uh, I'm not gonna show you me removing that right now. Um, it's not in a great spot for filming that. So you'll just have to imagine me taking that off. And lots of times when I change my pod, 
Uh, I actually don't even remove the old one until the new one's on. Um, I guess, I don't know. Sometimes I've changed my pod like right after bolusing. Let's say I'm about to eat a meal and I'm gonna do a fairly large bolus for that, like, I don't know, eight to 10 units for whatever I'm about to eat. Uh, I often get kind of worried that if I put in that bolus and then immediately remove the pod that some of that insulin is gonna leak out because you know, on the last day of your pod, sometimes absorption isn't the best. So I like to just leave the pod on after I deactivate it and make sure that all of the insulin that's just got in gets absorbed uh, before I rip it off my body. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And since that pod has been deactivated, now I'm going to go ahead and fill up the new one. So uh, I've just got it sitting on the table here in front of me and this part's gonna be boring, so maybe I'll speed that up for you. And it's gonna go on my arm, and I've been doing it in this new spot. I like it on the front part of my arm, and I've got enough meat on me here that it's there's plenty of fat for the uh, cannula to go in over here. So I like this better because I noticed that when I wear it on the back of my arm, when I go to sleep at night, um, it's kind of uncomfortable to lay on it. And like, you know, if I roll around and it's just, it's a little more comfortable on the front part of my arm. And I don't think I showed you guys either. I'm trying out a new Dexcom spot. I just put this on today. So uh, we'll see how that works out for me. So far it's pretty good, I like it. It didn't hurt at all when I inserted it, but I'm noticing that when I lean on the armrest of my computer chair, uh, it is kind of in the way right there. So it might not have been the best choice of placement, but it's there now. So we're gonna deal with it for the next 10 days. Okay, I lost my syringe, there it is. So I'm going to pull back the plunger. And I usually put about 150 units in my pump. So I pull the plunger back to 150. I'm gonna stick it in the vial of insulin. I push that air in. And then draw back the insulin. And that just helps kind of pressurize the vial so that it's not as hard to draw the insulin out. Insulin's pretty liquidy though, so it's not horribly difficult to draw it out. And you might be able to see that I've got some air bubbles up there, so I just tap those out, tap them to the top and kind of push the air back into the vial. Pull it back until I've got just about 150 units. Sometimes I do a little bit more. It really, for me, depends on just the day and kind of what activities I'm doing and how I'm eating. If I'm eating well, I don't need that much insulin. Um, but today's Friday and my boyfriend's coming to visit this weekend and we tend to uh, have some cheap meals when he's here. So I think I probably will end up using a little more insulin than usual this weekend. So now I've got my insulin in my vial and I'm going to take the pod. I always just keep it in its little package. I don't really know why, but that's how I like to do it. And, uh, well, I'll take it out so that you guys can see better as I do it. So there's a little hole down here in the bottom corner of the pod, and I'm going to stick my needle in that hole. And you can feel it's kind of got like a little rubbery thing in it, um, and you can feel it you know, when you put it in the right spot. And then I just slowly push it down. And you hear the two beeps. That means that the pod is active. Push all the insulin in. And now I am going to go into my PDM and push the button here that says set up new pod. And I hit next and then they're gonna to start to communicate with each other. And that'll take 30 seconds to a minute. It doesn't take a long time, but now you can hear it clicking and that's the pod priming itself, making sure the insulin is, you know, all the way through the pod so that when you put it on and hit start, uh, you're immediately getting that basal insulin. There's no air in the tubing. 
says priming, please wait. Oh, okay. So then that beep means that the priming is done and uh, you're ready to put the pod on your body. So it, it gives you instructions here, it shows you step-by-step step how to do it. I'm a seasoned pro at this point. So I'm gonna take the pod, pop off that blue piece, and it feels harder than it should to remove the blue part, um, but you're not gonna break it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt it if you push hard on it to get it to pop off. And then I take my cotton swab or my, my alcohol swab and I, um, stick it like in that little window where the needle is or where the cannula will be and I try to get out all of the residual insulin because when it primes and you pull off that blue thing it lots of times will like spray a little bit of insulin and if I leave it then it fogs up that window and it's hard to see if the cannula inserted properly so I like to just use my alcohol wipe and um, dry it out before I put it on so now I'm going to peel off the backing And I'm going to put it on my arm. Right about there. I think it's been long enough since the last time I had it on this arm that it shouldn't matter too much exactly where I put it. I try to rotate through lots of different sites so that I'm not overusing one spot. Okay, we'll see. Hopefully that's not too close to the muscle. We're about to find out. Okay, so now I am going to hit the start button down here, maybe. And then it's gonna ask me to confirm that the pod's attached correctly, and I believe that it is. And if it's not, it's too late now. So I'm gonna hit confirm. And now it's gonna talk to the pod, and I like to just kind of I don't really pinch it much. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it clicked about five times and then you hear it insert. And that one stung a little bit. They don't always hurt, but sometimes you feel them more than others. And I'm looking in the window and I can see that the cannula is inserted. One thing about decorating the pods is that um, it covers up the pink slide part where you can also tell, you know, if the insertion has been successful. But with this one, I felt it and I can see the cannula in the window. So I'm gonna go ahead on my PDM and hit yes, that it's inserted properly. And now the new pod is active. So that's it. I'm getting my basal insulin again. It's pretty easy, straightforward, um, not too scary. You know, you, after you do it a couple times, the mystery kind of goes away and it's not a big deal. So um, we'll just keep an eye on that and make sure that it looks good over the next couple of hours. My PDM will remind me to check my blood sugar in an hour and a half. So that's always a good you know, reminder to keep an eye on that after a pod change. Some people really will see a blood sugar spike right after a pod change. I don't tend to, um, kind of depends on you know stress levels and if I've recently eaten or anything like that. But uh, I will check back in in an hour and a half, make sure everything's good and for the next few days, I've got a festive Christmas tree Omnipod on. So I hope this was a, a fun little holiday uh, interlude for you guys. Maybe it inspired some ideas of how to make your insulin delivery devices a little more festive for the holidays. Um, shoot me any comments that you have or questions, and I will see you back here real soon. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Bye-bye.